Are you ready to get spicy? We're going to throw together some paprika, garlic, and onion powder. Okay, wait a second. Wrong script. That's for my new YouTube show, Appetizers and Amelia. <laughs> but we are talking about spice today. But we're not just talking about it. We're going to show you how using Q-Spice Analog and Mixed Signal Simulator can help you evaluate your next power design with confidence. And those other spices will have to wait for now. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Mike Engelhart from Corvo and I explore the benefits of Q-Spice. Corvo's Analog and Mixed Signal Simulator. We also explore how you can get started using this simulator, the supporting assets available for QSpice, and why this free analog and mixed signal simulator is a transformational tool for power designers. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about QSpice. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. So first off, tell us about QSpice. QSpice started out as a personal mission to get Spice right. Spice is a difficult code, even if you're from UC Berkeley and have had someone from the original Berkeley CAD group explain it to you and explain why it was written the way it was. It's still a difficult code. And it was written a long time ago. With QSpice, I wanted to implement a modern Spice simulator that applies the improvements currently available in computer hardware and advances in numerical methods. QSpice started out as a simulator for ASIC design. So for that, I wrote native Spice devices that would represent the building blocks of an ASIC, gates, flops, analog functions, and so on. These blocks looked like transistors to the rest of the circuit, but internally they were implemented in logic or behaviorally. And these blocks are still in QSpice, they remain useful for authoring models of ICs or systems. But QSpice became more than just a better SPICE program. Due to the interaction I've had with Corvo, it became a very powerful mixed mode simulator. QSpice includes optimizing Verilog and C++ compilers that convert your Verilog and C++ source code to native Intel object code. You can present an essentially arbitrary amount of digital logic to your SPICE simulation without impacting the simulation speed. So, Mike, what makes QSPICE so transformational? There's three important aspects on that for QSPICE. First, the better SPICE basics. SPICE solves arbitrary nonlinear circuits by exploiting the fact that all electronic devices have IV curves that are continuous in value and slope. This allows the solution to be found by analytically iterating to the solution. But SPICE programs aren't implemented with devices with continuous values and slope merely due to bugs in their implementations. In QSPICE, I fixed all those bugs. Additionally, the time step control was completely re-architected. The result is a better SPICE program that solves traditional transistor level circuits faster and more reliably than other SPICE programs. Second, is QSpice's fantastic mixed mode simulation capability. You can just draw a symbol, type in some Verilog or C++ code, and the included optimizing compilers will compile your source code to native Intel object code. Your digital logic will most likely evaluate faster in a QSpice simulation than it does in hardware, unless you're including a modern CPU in your circuit that you're simulating, then it would simulate at the same speed. And thirdly, QSpice uses the GPU for graphics. For the schematics, this means you will always be looking at desktop publishing quality drawings. Same for the waveform data. But since the GPU can draw beautifully rendered lines 100,000 times faster than the CPU, no data compression is necessary, and you get to see every single data point from the simulation exactly as it was computed. Okay, so who can use QSpice? And Mike, how much does it cost? QSpice is free, really free. I mean, actually free. Anyone can register and download it, even competitors. In fact, competitors are even welcome to offer models for QSpice and distribute those models to their customers to compete with Corvo products. It's that free. 
And frankly, competitors should standardize on QSpice in the interest of leveraging its enhanced performance and universal availability. Also, it's a big deal how much faster it is to model in QSpice than any other simulator. I'm speaking here with the benefit of hindsight of having personally modeled many hundreds of ICs, specifically many hundreds of power management ICs. And I'm available to show competitors how to get started with authoring models. I'm happy to show how much easier it is to model an IC in QSpice than any other simulator. So QSpice is free. We don't know how to make it more free. It's Corvo's contribution as a means of introducing itself to the power electronics community. That is fantastic. Now, Mike, can we back up a sec? First, what is the point to simulation? And how does one even start with QSpice? The point to simulation has always been so you can understand your circuit better. SPICE started up for IC design. There, it's very difficult to change components or connections. You need a focused ion beam to rework an IC. We now have the same situation in these days of surface mount and multi-layer boards. A modern printed circuit board is difficult to rework. You simply can't come to the same level of familiarity of a design on the bench as you can in simulation. Okay, so Mike, how does one start with QSpice? Well, let me show you how to run some simulations. When you first install QSpice, the first thing you should do is run some simulations. And there's a number of examples available. To start with QSpice, the very first thing you should do is run some simulations. Here under File, Open Demo, you will see a number of examples that you can immediately run. For example, here is a, um, a ladder filter implemented with crystals. Uh, here is a offline switch mode power supply. Uh, here is a audio amplifier, um, double pulse te test. Uh, stability analysis. Let's start with a uh, switchboard power supply simulation. So this is actually a, um, a design of a switchboard power supply. You'll notice I have the normal uh, SPICE devices of switches, diodes, resistors, inductors, and such. The, um, these other boxes here are extensions to SPICE available in QSPICE. These are native circuit elements, and these were f originally for ASIC design. So Viewed from the pins, they look like they're implemented with transistors, but inside they're either logic or um, analog behavior. This is a, um, uh, a transconductance, uh, and it, um, it, it requires power, just like a part in an ASIC would. So the, you don't see the power pins. If you hear, uh, you can show the symbol properties. This pane shows the symbol properties. You can inspect the pins, and if there's a checkbox here, then the pin is not visible, but the, the connection is made by name instead of by wire. Similarly, similarly for this part, you'll see that um, VDD and VSS are connected by name, so I don't have to litter my schematic with power connections. Okay, let's go through this design here. So this is the air amplifier, a compensation network. This part is a pulse width modulator, and the triangular wave is derived from current sense. So this is gonna be a current mode controller, uh, the inputs are a clock, a slope compensation function, error, you know, comp compensation node voltage. The um, the default logic of this block is that it is resonantly switched, means that meaning that when you turn off the top switch, it monitors the voltage on the switch node, and when that voltage rings down to zero, it will turn on the bottom switch. This is the oscillator, and it is um, uh, the frequency is proportional to the current through this resistor. The voltage on that resistor will be the minimum of three things, either an internal reference or v, the voltage on VRES1 or VRES2. VRES1 is connected to the output. So if the output is connected to ground, like if it were shorted, the frequency slows down so that for a given duty cycle, you give more time to, uh, at a given minimum duty cycle, you have more time for the inductor current to ramp down to zero before turning the top switch up back on again. So it, it allows it to run into a short circuit at current limit. Um, the, this part here is a phase detector and it's driving the voltage on VRES2. So that allows me to phase lock the switcher to an external clock source. The phase detector is a normal phase frequency detector. That is it sources or sinks a fixed current depending on whether the uh, oscillator edge came first or the reference clock came in first. This phase frequency detector also handles pulse pileup, meaning that if there's two 
pulses that come on the ref pin before there's an oscillator uh, edge, then it doesn't um, source the normal fixed current, but twice the normal fixed current, but allows it to slew rate, it slew into regulation faster, and it um, it extends the linear region of your feedback loop, so you can actually watch the uh, stability of their, of your phase lock loop a little bit easier. All right, let's run the simulation. Right click, the green button turns it on, and that is the uh, doing a startup transient analysis. Here's the output voltage, it went through something of a soft start, and then it uh, came into regulation. This is the voltage on the output of the phase frequency detector, and you can see it acquire phase lock. So in this simulation, I've done a startup transient analysis, I've simulated five milliseconds, and I've acquired phase lock, and the entire simulation occurred in slightly over a third of a second. QSPICE is fast. There's really no other way of describing it. Now, there, we do have videos that describe how to operate the GUI um, in more detail, but in a nutshell, this is going to be a more modern GUI than, than you've bef otherwise seen in CAD tools. There's relatively few dialogues. So, for example, if I want to edit this transit command, it's edited right on the screen, and it, there's a syntax hint showing underneath where I'm typing. So, instead of going to a dialogue and having a dialogue force you to type correct syntax, it just tells you what the syntax is. The advantage there is that you, um, uh, your eyes don't have to jump around the screen as you edit things. Everything is edited in place. Um, I find it um, a, a very significant improvement over uh, other tools. Um, and then these two, these other panes here, you have the symbol browser. You can find symbols here and, and drag them onto the schematic. Uh, you have a preview pane for symbols. This pane over here is a symbol properties. You click on something, you can see all the attributes to that symbol. And then here at the bottom, you have a little console output that will print the, um, uh, uh, that as the simulation runs, you'll see what kind of messages the simulator had to give you. That's great. So Mike, can you show us something that really shows what QSpice can do? Yes, there's an example in the distribution that really is worth studying. It shows the capability of QSpice. It also shows you how to make your own macro models for it, also models for ICs. Yeah, let me show you an example that really illustrates what QSpice can do. Under File, again, Open Demo, you'll see Practical Switchbook Power Supplies. Let's look at this. This is an example that's really worth studying because it shows what QSpice can do and it shows you how to make a, a switchboard power supply macro model. This is this model is implemented as a hierarchical design, so we can look at the internals and probe all the voltages inside it and such. Let's enter the schematic. Let's enter the model. Right click, enter schematic, and this schematic is what is represented by this symbol. Okay, so you see, you know, some combinational logic, you know, gates, normal spice stuff, and um, you know, except these are all ASIC quality, ASIC modeling quality gates and flops. Uh, but the magic is this part here, uh, right click, this looks like hierarchical design, but let's actually, it's actually written in C. So right click C++ interface, open C++ source, and that's the source code to this model. Uh, QSpice includes um, a compiler that will compile this for you to the DLL. It's a type of constant on time, except that it's also constant frequency. And the... Um, uh, it's a deceptively simple algorithm that is um, uh, itself oscillating, doesn't require an error amplifier, and is. I really don't know how to make a, a better algorithm than this. It's it's basically perfect. The switch is either on or off exactly when it should be. Plus, it's constant frequency. Plus, it's intrinsically stable. So um, uh, let's let's run the simulation. And there you can see it um, running three milliseconds of this five kilohertz switcher, and it does it in, in about a second. So it, it, again, it's exceedingly fast. Uh, and the entire model, the entire behavior of this is is um, uh, uh, included. You know, it has it has hiccup mode. Let's short the output. I'll, I'll short the output here. Now the output is shorted, and I'll watch this thing do uh, hiccup mode. So there is the... Um, the thing hiccuping it, it, it puts out a, a couple of pulses it puts out a few pulses it really gets, gets too much uh, peak current and then it shuts down for um, 
what is it, what is it doing? It's, it's shutting down for 10 milliseconds. So it's hiccuping along. Everything is there. This is a, a more complete switchboard power supply macro model than you generally find in industry. And it's exceedingly fast and it's very easy to implement. I have implemented many hundreds of switchboard power supply macro models and I've never been able to model something this thorough this easily as with QSpice because of the modeling language available. So, Mike, what resources exist for QSpice? Well, there are a number of videos. These are cited in the help file and they're also on the landing page for QSpice. These videos show you how to operate the GUI. They show how to import third-party models. There's one that gives an introduction to typing C++ into a SPICE simulation. There's also an active QSPICE users forum, uses their shared questions, examples, and source code. And I'm available to help people figure it out. My email address, mike.inglehart at corver.com, is on the help about dialog box in QSPICE. Fantastic. So can we get a little practical here? What if I need a model that isn't in QSPICE? What if I actually want to build the circuit? Okay, so... I have put some thought into making it as easy as possible to import a third-party model in a very non-error-prone way. Let me show you how easy it is to you know, build a practical circuit using imported models and then procure the parts for the circuit. So this file I just downloaded from Texas Instruments site. It's one of their LDOs. It was the first LDO that came up. And I simply drag and drop the file into QSpice. It recognizes that it's a model. And because this particular model is written to include other sub-circuits, I have to check this box called Include Entire File. Uh, and then say yes, and it just makes a symbol. Now I can edit the symbol so it looks more reasonable, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to use the symbol as it is. Um, let's hook up a circuit. Let's make the other connections we need to ground. We need some input voltage. V gives me a voltage source. I'm going to make 3.3 volt output. I'll give it 4 volts in. I'm going to turn the th I'm going to enable the circuit during the simulation. Uh, control C, Control V. This will be a piecewise linear that comes up to a volt uh, after a millisecond. So 1 millisecond is 0 and 1.01 milliseconds it's 1 volt. Uh, notice that while I'm typing this in, it gives me um, hints on the bottom as to how to type this syntax in. Down here you see little hints. Um, all right, now we have to, it, this is the adjustable version, so I have to give it a voltage divider to program the output voltage. Uh, 1.70K and make this 1K. For this LDO, one microfarad is plenty of output capacitance. One microfarad. And I'll run it as rated current. I'll run it as a, a one amp output. And that's our circuit. Now I need to say um, how much time I want to simulate. Again, you'll notice that as I type these commands in, it gives me syntax hint underneath where I'm typing. Um, the whole idea in QSpice is that all the editing is done in place, not in dialogue. So your eyes don't have to shift around when you're editing stuff, but it still gives you the same information you would get from a dialogue because it gives you as a hint underneath the area where you're typing. Okay, let's turn the circuit on. Run simulation. And here we have the output voltage. So we can see the thing. There's the enable input. And then once I enable it, the thing comes up running. All right, so that's all good. Now let's say you actually want to um, buy this thing. That's okay. Point at the part, right click, buy now from Mauser. And that will take you to the product page for this device. And you can um, look at quantities, see how many are in stock and go ahead and, and, and buy the parts. I've um, put some thought into making importing, importing third-party models as easy as possible. And uh, that's, that's what I've come up with. All right. So, Mike, where can I download QSpice? You get QSpice either from Mauser or from Corvo's website. 
there's a vanity URL, www.qspice.com, that will get you straight to the right page so you can register. You'll be emailed back a link to get the downloader. Installation is similar to most mainstream software where there's a downloader that downloads the installer and that makes sure that the downloader, which isn't updated very often, gets the very most up-to-date installation release. The installation does require an internet connection, but thereafter there is support for running air-gapped. Fantastic. Well, Mike, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the interest. Q-Spice is the only thing I do for a living. So in any final analysis, your interest in Q-Spice is basically a matter of life and death for me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Q-Spice. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.